Hi there, Internet. How the heck are ya? It's Taylor. I'm back with yet another fascinating book review. Or review of a fascinating book. Something like that. Um, anyways, I, I read a... What's it called? <laughs> I have to like, look at my notes because the, the title... I, I mess up constantly. Uh, the title is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. And it's not an absolutely remarkable thing. It's a, it's a book. Let's get into it. Here there be spoilers. 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 Okay, so Hank Green. He's one of them, their internet sensations. He and his brother John Green are the vlog brothers, and they do other stuff. And they vlog to each other weekly and started companies to help people. And he does something science-y. And John Green's an established young adult author. <laughs> See? Words in front of my mouth. Yeah. Young adult author. His brother Hank, this is his first novel. And it's science fiction and social commentary and probably autobiographical in some ways, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's a thinly veiled, and by thinly veiled, I mean not at all veiled commentary on society. Uh, the plot, yeah. But 64-ish robots show up in all the major cities. There you go. That's the plot. That's pretty much the whole book. Um, everything else is an internal monologue by the, from the main character, whose name is April May. And yeah, this thing tries to be about as cute as that name uh, suggests. It, it's a, it's April May is an okay person that fucks up a lot, but she gets famous on the social medias, on the YouTubes. On the everything else because she's one of the first ones to spot this magical sci-fi-ish giant transformer-looking robot in New York City because apparently and she put it online and that made her famous. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, it's just a <laughs> yeah. John, you know Hank Green again is internet famous um, and probably trickling over into real life famous and he talks about that a lot and how it can affect people and how uh, people react to it, and that's this book. It's April May, you know, dumps her girlfriend in an unceremonious way and starts to sleep with other people in an unceremonious way and thinks she ends up becoming uh, sort of what she dreads in a way and becomes like this char unlikable character who thinks it's up to her to solve the world's problems. And by the world's problems, I mean the giant robots that are in in, uh, in the middle of the cities. Um there's collective dreaming. There's some puzzles. The book doesn't really go into that a ton. I mean, it sort of touches on it, but it's not puzzles the reader can really solve because they're not given enough information to solve them. Um, the, other, the other characters aren't really fleshed out very well. They're kind of just told through the eyes. You know, they're, it's just the characters exist to help April May. <laughs> and, and April May April May is developed. Don't get me wrong. That's The, the whole book's about her. Um and, you know, it's it's a fast read. I read it in a couple of days. I've been sitting on this review for a while because I wasn't sure how to go about it. And I'm actually up north right now uh, talking about this book because my buddies are out snowmobiling and I'm not right now because of you, dear audience. That and I didn't want to pay 500 bucks to rent a snowmobile because I'm a cheap son of a bitch. So, yeah, here we are. Uh, Plot-wise... Yeah, basically, April May is stuck in an unhappy design job and just stumbles upon this robot at four in the morning, calls her buddy. That buddy comes over and they put it up on the YouTube and the next morning, she wakes up and she's famous. And from there, the fame gets to her head. She gets an agent. Uh, she they she thinks it's up to her to solve this sort of riddle that is part of this collective dream that these robots are sending out. Um there's an there's a antagonist who thinks the robots might harm society, you know, humanity. It might be bad for society, and he's there. And yeah, not much happens. It, it's really the robots just kind of sit there. A hand, one of the hands goes kind of running off of one of them at some point in the thing, and it gets hidden until the end of the book where it has to save April May. Except for it doesn't really save her. I don't think. Whatever. I think her body's destroyed. And then there's a sequel. It's a cliffhanger book. And that's, uh, anyways, that's, I'll stop saying anyways too, but that's one of my pet peeves with this kind of thing. I don't mind cliffhanger novels in a series, but I don't think the first book in a series should be cliffhangery. Learn from Star Wars, you goddamn motherfuckers. New Hope. 
Vader looks like he's dead. Obi Wan, blah blah blah. They blow up the Death Star, and then you know it's it's a resolution. Then you have a cliffhanger after Empire. After you've already hooked him in, this book. I got to the last page. I'm like, son of a bitch. I've got to look at the next one and figure out what's going on now, because it doesn't wrap anything up. It doesn't resolve anything. There's no. There's a false resolution as far as the puzzles go, and. Then April May gets hurt, and that's kind of the end of the fucking book. And it drives me a little nuts. So, yeah, I'll probably read the next one just so I can find out what the hell's going on. I might just watch a YouTube review, to be honest, because I figure watching a YouTube review about a book that's about YouTube and science fiction, that kind of fits. So, we'll see. Eh. B minus. Read it if you want. I'll put an affiliate link below. I don't have the book on me because I'm up north. I'll put a flashy thingy here here so you can see what the cover looks like it's blue it's yellow there's really stylized robots in the background sort of but it's mostly text yeah i don't know I, i'm cranky again on this one I, well, I expected more out of it i didn't get it it is what it is talk to you guys later